Come with me as we explore the Minolta MN20 HD camera. All right, here we go. We've got the Minolta MND20, 44 megapixel 2K HD video recording camera. Let me go ahead and uh, open the plastic here. Ooh. So pretty compact form factor here. You know, it's it, just from initial glance, the lens looks very similar to cameras by Vivitar. It doesn't have an extendable lens outside of the glass area. All of the lens zooming is done inside of the housing here. Get a better angle for you there. There we go. Pretty similar to a Sony DSC W830 camera, which is a very popular point and shoot camera. Just from the initial glance, it's got a USB port here. The battery access is here. And go ahead and open the box here and see if we've got a charged battery. Inside of this uh, bag, oh, there's a memory card included too. Go ahead and push that back there. See what we got. We've got. Oh, interesting. The battery this uses is a NP6L, which looks very similar to a Canon NB6L, which is used in a lot of Canon PowerShot models. We've got a 32 gig card. Uh, we've got a little adapter here. And there's the adapter. And inside this bag, we have a cable, a USB charging cable. So this is going to hook right in here, like so. And then this connection point right here is going to plug into the camera USB port to charge. And you can see which way to put the battery in based upon the prongs inside of the camera. Let's see if I can show you this here. There we go. I'm shining a light in there. You can see which way the battery post is going to connect. Right now I'm going to take the battery and we're going to go ahead and slide it in and see if the battery is charged out of the box. We're going to go ahead and throw in the SD card as well. If we can figure out how to do it. There we go. Okay. And we'll power it on. That's a good start. It did power on. Like I was talking about, there's no lens that zooms out because it's built into the housing. And here's an example of a similarly sized uh, point and shoot camera by Nikon, just to illustrate the difference in the zoom styles. So this is a standard point and shoot camera with a 12X optical zoom. And you'll see when you power on the camera, the zoom lens extends. Whereas when you turn the, the Minolta camera on and off, the lens does not move, it's fixed. So the optical image capability of the Nikon, and here's another example of a Kodak, are actually going to be better than the Minolta. But as you can see, this Kodak, for example, despite being the same size as a 12 megapixel camera, here is the Minolta camera powered on. I've only had it on for a few minutes, and you'll see in the upper right area there, let me get my little pointer guy, in the upper right area here, it's going to have, actually let me take off the plastic first, that'll be easier for you guys to see. In the upper right, we have the number of pictures remaining, which is 8,778 at the current uh, picture quality. And out of the box, it looks like it's set to 12 megapixels. It's in auto mode. And the battery light indicator is here. Let's go ahead and take our first picture. Let me get a little prop here. 
We're gonna put it back here. Then we're gonna take the camera, move it over here, and snap a picture. Okay, made a actually made a picture sound. I believe you could probably turn that out, uh, turn that off in the the menu functionality. And now we're gonna fully zoom in on this small tripod and see how far it goes. That's the maximum zoom. Okay. So if we go back to our Nikon, for example, in terms of optical zoom capability, I'm gonna power on the Nikon. Okay, there we go. And that, it's not gonna focus because it's too close, but you can get an idea of just how much farther the zoom will extend on just a kind of a general point and shoot camera with a normal optical zoom. Okay, I clicked the menu there. Okay, now we're actually gonna be recording a clip here. Ooh, that's not good. You can see the jerkiness in the judder with the digital zoom. Oh my, look at the battery life. I've only had this camera on for maybe five minutes. Currently recording, which will use more battery, but we're already down to one bar left on the battery life. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and take a shot, regular. And then if I touch this top button here, the button right here, when you're in photo mode, when I touch that, Look right here, this is where the actual flash is. It's actually more of a continuous light. Right here. When I press the top button, here. Indicated by light, this tiny little light comes on. Here, let me turn off some lights. Still kind of bright. There we go. That's our light, guys. That's the light on this camera. Be curious to see how much battery life that little light uses up. That's the light for the camera. Let's go ahead and take a picture with the light on. And then I'm gonna turn the light off. and we'll see if we can tell any differences in the picture quality. I, I just, I don't think that that tiny little light is going to be able to really work on anything like, okay, now we're gonna take some pictures with this. And then slightly zoomed in, we're gonna zoom in at the very top of the tripod. Okay, so we took two pictures there. I'm gonna move this off to the side. We're gonna bring in the Nikon camera from before. This guy right here. We're gonna take similar pictures. Thank you, Nikon. Thank you, test subject Nikon. We'll move you out of the way. Bring the Minolta back. All right, so now what we're gonna do is take an indoor movie. And to change. So I'm gonna hit the M button. It's gonna take us to full HD movie mode. And we're just gonna hit the top shutter button, which is also the start of the movie. And you can see it's recording here. 
And I'm just gonna move the camera around a little bit. We'll zoom out. And move the camera around a little bit. Fly it around. Wee. Wee. Got some serious pickleball action going on here. I'm shooting in 2K or uh, 2.7K currently. As you can see, the video quality outside is much better than inside. The limited lens on this camera works way better in natural light for both videos and still pictures. And this is it zoomed out at 8X. And here's my dog River playing with the ball. Uh, as you'll notice, whenever the camera is pointed towards uh, either an area with sun or indoors an area with light, um, it, the camera really struggles to accurately reproduce that and you'll see quite a bit of judder. But I do like that the green is actually quite accurate to the realistic green color that that fake turf is. Okay, to go into movie settings on this Minolta, you're gonna click the button in the bottom here. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. This is not a touch screen. You have to use the toggle wheel over here to move the camera. Settings. Okay, so let's just scroll through here real quick and get an idea of what all is happening. We've got video. Movie size, okay, we'll probably, we'll definitely use that. Beauty filter, recording mode, time-lapse settings. I actually read about that when I was looking at buying this camera. Exposure, white balance, sharpness, color effect, and ISO. My stomach was just growling. Must be, must be about lunchtime. Okay, so scene, we'll do that first. We're gonna hit scene, it's preset to auto, which is right here. And if we scroll over, there's a night mode, portrait, landscape, backlight, sport, party, beach, and high SO. And we're going to test a few of those when we do some additional indoor and outdoor shooting with this camera. So I won't get into them right now. And then to get back out of this menu, you can hit that, the menu button down here again. Okay, I'm going to go back in and go to movie size. There we go, okay, so it's set to 1080p, which is high definition. What this camera was advertised as is 2K or 2.7K, which is about half the resolution of a 4K. 720p, which is also HD, just slightly lower resolution. And 480p, which is standard definition. What are the benefits and drawbacks of using these? So it really depends on how you're gonna be displaying the movie. If you have a 4K TV or a high definition TV, you'd probably wanna stick with one of these two modes. What are the downsides to using these two modes? Uh, battery drain and uh, card size limitations because they're gonna be recording in a higher format and they're gonna take up way more space. So if you film in 2.7K, it's going to take up roughly six times the space of 480p. Okay, now we're in camera mode. You can see eh, just barely, it says 12M, which is 12 megapixels, which is how it's set out of the box. If you wanted to change that to get to the 44 megapixel, which is why we're doing this review, you're gonna scroll over and go to image size. Click into it, and these are all the settings. So it's set out of the box at 12 to make it seem like you can take a lot of pictures with the included 32 gig card. You can go down even below, I believe, seven megapixels and all the way up to 44. 
So let's go ahead and go up to 44. Okay, 44 megapixel. So with the 32 gig card, the capacity, if all you took was 44 megapixel images, is around 2300. I already have a little bit of content that we already took some photos and videos. So call it maybe around two and a half thousand pictures with the 32 gig card at 44 megapixels. Oh, okay. It does have a three, it does have three burst modes. So if you wanted to take multiple pictures, if you're taking pictures of something that's moving, uh, that can be pretty handy. Or if you're just unsure if the focus is working well, you can take a, a burst. I'm going to set that to off. Just standard. Go back into the menu. There's a timer. Adjust the exposure. Adjust the white balance. What's quality? Oh, just the quality of the pictures above and beyond the megapixels. That's interesting. What else we got here? Anti-shake. ISO, color effect, sharpness. What was the bottom one there? Smile capture and face detection. So it's got about a, a little over a second startup time, which is pretty quick. So if you pull it out of your pocket and you wanted to shoot, it's going to take about a a second for it to, to pop up and then you can pretty much immediately take a picture. Camera is powered on, but the included battery is right here. How is that possible? Before I was telling you about uh, how it looked oddly similar to a Canon NB6L battery, I pulled out a Canon NB6L battery. I'm going to turn off the camera. And it works. That's kind of crazy. So let's see if the, the it's at 700 milliamp hour. The Canon's actually a thousand milliamp hour battery, but they both work. They both power on and you're able to use the camera. Now, I don't work for Minolta. This video is not sponsored by Minolta. I don't know if there would be any complications with using this battery in terms of overheating, etc. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend using this, but in a pinch, it did work. If you are doing panorama shots or have a fixed distance that you are shooting, all of the pictures shown here were taken at 44 megapixel resolution with the Minolta. Here are my final thoughts on this camera. For just shy of 90 bucks, this has the highest resolution of any point and shoot camera that I've personally tested. It does its best in outdoor shooting situation with loads of natural light. If you do end up using it indoors, make sure you don't use the digital zoom as it will make it look pixelated and pretty unnatural. In terms of video shooting capability, I was quite impressed with the 2K video mode. The camera seems to ha handle natural light much better than artificial indoor light as you could kind of tell from the few clips that I shared.